The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day from TFNN. Welcome to the April 8th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life, life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating. To you and I, just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon, I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But most importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in 877-927-6648. And if you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those fingers do the walking. You can send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question in. In the Tiger's Den, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magical, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. Right now, the Dow trading down about half a percent. That's 118 points. S&P is off less than two-tenths of a percent. That's five points. No big deal there. NDX 100 basically flat off two points. Uh, so uh, the biggest mover percentage-wise is the uh, Dow. And then the Russell 2000 is off about the same percentage-wise, which is six points. Gold's up six bucks. We'll look at that. Silver's up 13 pennies, leading the charge the upside. Booking holding 17 bucks, a little less than 1%. Chipotle up $6.00. Less than 1%. AutoZone up 4 Coherent Inc. up 3 Wind Resorts up 2.5% or 3 buck, 360 To the downside, it is Boeing. We'll focus. We'll spend some time there. That's off 18 bucks, 4.5%, because it's number one uh, weighted stock inside of the Dow, so having a big influence on the move lower in the Dow. Uh, Regenerate Pharmaceuticals is off 12 uh, Spirit Aero Systems, is that Spirit Airlines? Uh, that's down 6.5%. Uh, Ascendus Pharmaceuticals off uh, six. No, that's not Spirit Airlines. Spirit Airlines is love, isn't it? They, they've they got the love out there. Okay, so uh, let's do this here. Let's uh, let's let's start off by taking a, a look at the Dow. But if we're, we're going to do that, let's do it like this first. Let's first look at the actual components inside the Dow. So here is the Dow 30 stocks from Boeing at number one. I don't recall the exact weighting. Do I have it? Yeah, 10%. So Boeing is 10%. United Health is 6%. 3M is 5. Goldman is 5. You get down to nine stocks, represent 50% of the weighting in there. Some people are kind of amazed that IBM, but it's a market cap, is, is still number nine. They're within that top 10. The 10th one would be Caterpillar. And then you get all the way down to the uh, to the 30th stock, that's Pfizer, 1%. And uh, Coca-Cola, 1%. And Walgreens Boots, uh, 1%, 1% from a weighting standpoint, a little over 1% out here. So now let's go take a look at Boeing. And what is Boeing doing? And when I say let's go take a look at Boeing, you know... And I know, and Dave Mason knows, uh, we're just kind of trying to understand, is the move lower taking out support? And the answer is, no, it is not. Not when we take a look at market profiles. And on this chart here that you're looking at, if, you, as you're, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, if not, let me explain. Uh, support, there's going to be two levels of support here. The first is going to be the bottom of its bullish structured daily profiles. 370.20 is the number. The low so far today is 
eight, th I'm sorry, 316, oh, I, hold on a minute here. Hold on a minute here. I was giving you wrong data. The low today, 371.86. I know that didn't look right. Again, the bottom of the box, that was correct, 370.20. Has support been broken? The answer is no. It has secondary support, or maybe what one could say primary support, because the weekly profile should be stronger than the uh, daily profile out here. And that's at 362.90. That's the number, 362.90 out here. So you've got, uh, so, and if we take a look at volume, if, uh, and, and Boeing could be making an A to B equals CD to the downside. It'll have to take out the lows from March 22nd. That number is 361.52 and would need to do it with more than 10 million shares out here. So price today pushing lower with some decent volume, 9.9 .9 million shares. Again, the last time down there, that's that potential of a B point to an A to B equals CD uh, to the downside. And by the way, let me give you what that would look like. It's not there. I am not at all communicating to you that Boeing is making an A to B equals CD to the downside. If anybody is, then they are really great at, uh, they've got a crystal ball. Because I can't tell if this thing is going to, it hasn't broken support. So how, how could this possibly be making an A to B equal CD to the downside? Well, the news could get worse out there, that's for sure. If it did, you'd be looking to move down to about the 314 to the 291 level. And that would or should put a pretty decent world of hurt inside of the Dow simply because of its weighting. So what do we know? We know at 112 in the afternoon, Dow is trading lower. Primarily because of Boeing, but not only because of Boeing. The first five to for the first four stocks that make up a significant portion of the weighting are trading to the downside. Home Depot to the upside, Apple to the upside. That would be stocks five and six out here. Okay, so we know that. What's the Dow doing? Well, in fact, let me just switch over to that specific chart. Let's go take a look at the cash indice versus the equity futures right now, just so I can give you a number to be watching. And if we take a look at what the Dow itself has done thus far today, nothing more than test support. Now, in the case of the cash indice, what we're using as support is Stevie's green line. That's 26,242. How do you know when a retracement is nothing more than just a retracement? Well, one of the ways you know, one of the exact ways that you know, is price just simply moves down and tests Stevie's green line. Or it can be red. When it's green, it's uh, uber bullish. And what I mean by uber bullish, I'm looking at the Dow. I'm not looking at uh, Boeing right now. The Dow has a rising price oscillator above zero. That's a beautiful thing. Now, look, today's move in the cash indice, you can see a little doji in Stevie's window. That was on Friday. You can see that today, actually, right now is a doji out here. But I don't know where this is going to close. It does have, but we do have a bearish reversal candle right now which is the gap to the downside. That's what we have out here. As long as Friday's low isn't tagged, uh, we have the makings of a potential top. But in order for that to occur, we have to see support being broken. Inside the cash indice, it's going to be Stevie's green line, 26,242. Breaking below that, closing below that, doesn't mean it's curtains, but it is a reason, I'll get the word out, that you really have to go ahead and then investigate further. But right now at 1.14 in the afternoon, this is nothing more than your garden variety pullback, retracement I should say, to support in the Dow Jones Industrial Index. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. 
The TAS Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of TAS Market Profile, the TAS Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we were looking at the Dow uh, cash indice out here, and uh, here's the Dow equity futures contract, the daily. We can also see that all prices done thus far today is tested support. That's Stevie's green line, 26.247. We want to pay attention to it because of the potential for a, a butterfly sell pattern that is out there, but price must break through uh, one level of support. There are several levels of support. We're going to go take a look at those out here, but the first level that we would need to see crack is 26 six two forty seven. Uh, the Gartley or uh, butterfly pattern out here, which has an A to B equals C D, and you can see that pattern. Um, I, I would gladly take five dollars for every pattern that sets up that doesn't confirm with a bearish reversal signal with markets moving higher and a close below Stevie's green line and pay ten dollars for everyone that did do that or received ten dollars when it does do and you'd make more money because we just have to see support levels fail out here and thus far at 119 in the afternoon that is not the case so be careful out there be mucho grande careful and i know that is basically doesn't work out there okay so let's take a look at the dow Equity futures contract, the Dow cash indice out here, and Jay in the den asked if there were any new profiles, and it was kind of like uh, uh, like uh, Rowan and Martin. Rhodes in them, and he'll be the Martin out there. Uh, teamwork, because uh, how did he know that, in fact, it was the Dow equity futures contract, which is the only of the four uh, contracts out here that formed a new market profile, or I will say is forming. 
Now, I have this right now on the June contract. I did not have this here this morning. I only had it on my modified or synthetic or composite contract, and that showed up late last night. So the mere fact that now it's moving over to the June, fairly solid. We won't really know till manana. But what we can see is now we have two levels of support, really kind of three out here, but we'll call them just two. And the second level is going to be the bottom of this new profile, 26017. I was going to say, and I can say, and you can say, that there's also another level of support at 26214, the center of the box. Not until the – so here, with regard to the Dow itself – um, which clearly is being influenced a lot by Boeing out here. Not only does price need to close below Stevie's green line in order for there to say there's a change in trend, when you look at this chart here, let me just do this, make it a little bit easier for you. And I'm just going to say if you were just a person, you were just listening in, and you're saying, what the heck are these market profile things you talk about? Whoops, I didn't mean to do that. I would say you don't need to know how they're calculated. You don't need to know anything about them other than this fact. The bottom is support. The top is resistance. If you trade above the top, you've broken through resistance, says you want to move higher. Pullbacks that just test the top of the box, old resistance, new support. Is that the final support? No. The bottom of the box will always be support. If there's going to be a change in trend, support must be broken. If you now look at the uh, Dow Equity Futures contract, the June contract, off of the lows out here from December of last year, you do not see a close below the bottom of a market profile. What's that mean? Support's never been broken out here. Support, but we, we did see resistance broken. We saw resistance. It was a bear structured box out here. Resistance was broken through on January 17th. Now, it didn't catch the bottom. You need other tools to catch a bottom or catch a top, so to speak. Each of them still have to confirm El Confirmo out here. And in this case, we don't have it. So you're not going to see, and I'm not going to see, we're not going to see a change in trend until we see support broken. At this stage of the game, that is not what we have. Now, let's, I don't want to beat a dead horse. I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. I'm trying to focus in the one area where we do really need to pay attention to because Boeing could just be a real, you know, eh, I don't want to say crash and burn because it's good. Eh, 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 but you know what I mean out there. That's kind of the problem with regard to Boeing out here. So, but if we take a look at the Dow Equity Futures contract as well, and I look at the horizontal levels of support set up by its horizontal trading ranges out here, we don't have any breaks of support here either. Price would have to get below 26047. This is the YM out here in order for that to take place. And that is not what we have in the cards. That's not what it has in the cards for us. Okay, so that's that's that, so to speak. But now the equity futures contracts, by the way, are in essence each doing the same thing, or sort of. What do I mean by that? Well, if we take a look at the ES Mini out here, what we're going to see is today could very well be day eight of that Tommy DeMarc setup trend line. Uh, the move lower today, basically a test of Stevie's green line, that green line number 2683. So it's close, no cigar, but still nothing damaged, nothing broken here. If we go take a look at the NQ, in the case of the NQ, we're going to see the same type of thing, same type of thing being nothing more than a test of support, Stevie's green line, 7572. Now, we want to pay attention to that because today, if it closed below that level, you could, you would get a bearish reversal candle, and you would then be below Stevie's green line. And price had been moving higher, doing less relative energy. It would say this A to B equals CD pattern that you and I are looking at on my screen that takes you to 78.55 uh, may not happen or may not happen just yet, so to speak. So there are warning signals out here. But, folks, the warning signals are nothing more than if you happen to live in Florida. Maybe it's like your state, too. I don't know. I can just report on our weather people here that basically say each day has a chance of rain. Hello. You know, look, 
We can flip a coin, heads or tails. I'm going to be right half of the time. The market's either going higher or lower. We want to be more right than that. We want super Doppler out here. And that's what I think we provide you with regard to Stevie's green line, red line, the TAS market profiles, and some of the other tools that we use out here. Okay, enough of that. Hocus pocus. Dominocus. Let's go to our first question. This coming here from, um, from uh, Mike. Mike M. Haven't spoken to Mike from Sarasota in a while. Mike, thanks for writing in. Says, uh, Adobe, can we take a look at Adobe? The ticker symbol there is A-D-B-E. So let's go take a look at it, and then let's finish reading Mike's question so we know what it is that we can help with. He says, uh, thank you, Taz profile help on this one. 30, 60, and 120. Whoa, 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 whoa. All right, we'll do that for you. But I typically don't look at those profiles on the individual stocks for those time frames. I'm not saying they don't work. I'm just saying it's complicated. No, it's just you just don't have a lot of data out here. Like the 30-minute chart, okay, I get it. You can break a six and a half hour day into you know equal 30-minute sessions. You can't on a 60. First, first, I'm just going to do what he asked for because you know if you write in, that's what I do or I try to do, and we'll see the profile. So we're going to put 30, 60, and 120. We're switching from daily, weekly, and monthly out here. And so let's answer those questions first out here. So Mike, with regard to Adobe, uh, you can see on the very left-hand panel you got your 30-minute profiles. You're above the top of the box, 266.83. On the oh, let me move this box over here. Maybe you're watching on Tiger T. TV. If not, you can get the archive of this through the YouTube channel. Resistance on the 120. The top of that box is 268.95, just above the top of the 60-minute profile, 268.31. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Be right back, and we'll finish up Adobe AD BE. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that 
many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're taking a look at uh, ticker symbol ADBE. That is Adobe. Uh, those of you that use, uh, what, the Photoshop, uh, the PDF reader, I think it all comes from Adobe. But here we're just taking a look at the uh, stock. And Mike is, in essence, asking the question, do I think that Adobe will go back and retest the lows of Friday? Now, Friday, uh, let me just expand the chart out here, the daily time frame, Mike. And you were more interested in short-term time frames because of the put spread that you have on that um, we're just going to focus on the daily. So you've got the numbers. Uh, if, you didn't, if you didn't get the numbers, uh, then watch the archive. You'll be able to take a snapshot of that screen, you know, at about half past the hour out here. So on Friday, when you were entering a trade, there was a brand new um, profile that formed. So it's apropos. You were asking about profile information on the shorter term time frame out here. And uh, so first of all, here's what we know about the profile. Bullish in structure, center line closer to the bottom, center is 265. That was the low of today. Um, the uh, bottom of that box is 262, and the top of the box of resistance, 272. So what we know about the center line of the box at 265, now it's also a bullish profile because you can see on a daily basis the low of Friday's profile that formed is above the prior low, and the high is above the prior high. Just simply profile language, that's higher highs and higher lows out here. So bullish all the way around at this stage of the game. Um, at the center line, you've got both buyers and sellers that are camping out there. At the bottom line, meaning the bottom of the box, the 262, just seller, uh, just buyers out there. So that's why we kind of call that bullish in structure and strong support. Not that it can't be punched through, but what you know is you know what you're up against. You're up against some muscles in that 262 to 265 level out here. So it's held. Um, you know, is price going to make a run for 272.67? Uh, perhaps it is trading below Stevie's green line out here. Uh, that number, by the way, is 269.60 is what it looks like to me. Um, but it just, it's just inside a consolidation and a bullish structured consolidation. So you may not get a ton of movement out here um, for you in that trade. Uh, but this is what Stevie sees at this stage of the game for Adobe. I don't see any other real, now that's a daily. If I look at the weekly out here, Mike, it's bullish. It's above the top of the box. If I look at the monthly, it's bullish. It's above the top of the box. Each of these suggests that price wants to go test the high from September. There was 19 million shares when that high was formed last week. There was 12 million shares. Okay, so it's moving higher with lighter volume. You're still inside that swing point, that weekly swing point, which is what we were looking at. So there's no reason for the high to not be tested, 277.61. Of course, 270, 267 has got to be busted through out there. So, Mike in Sarasota, good to hear from you. I hope that helps you out, and best of luck with your trade. Uh, quiet in the uh, let your fingers do the walking department. How about inside the den? Can I wake anybody up out there? Anybody want to look at anything? Um, let's go look at gold. What's gold doing out here? What is gold doing out here? Well, I'll share with you what gold is doing and what gold needs to do. And what gold needs to do, much like we took a look at for other equities, we take a look at the uh, support or resistance, that being Stevie's green or red line. Right now it's red when we take a look at the daily contract for gold. we can, And it's at 1301. We're trading at 1301.70. 
at 13,180 at the moment. But price has found this level to be resistance. I'm not going to complain about a dollar on a $1,300 stock out here. Price also tested perhaps the top of a daily profile out here. So what we've seen is nothing more than this continued consolidation sideways that's been in place inside the gold contract ever since about March 29th out here. Now, there's been some decent swings from high to low, but still just consolidating down at the lows, kind of coiling, coiling to go in which direction. I, I'm not completely certain about that. On the daily time frame chart, here's the bummer. Bummer from, and I'm bullish, by the way. I'm, I've got a bullish position inside gold, but hey, it's not exactly like I'm really enthused about what I see at 134 in the afternoon. And what is it that I see at 134 in the afternoon? Well, when Stevie's green line turns red, as it did on March 29th, or it can go from red to green, in this case, we're looking green to red, what you're always anticipating, you know that at some point in time, that uh, you're going to see Price and Stevie's line catch up with each other. Well, that happens to be today. And so today, it's mucho importante for Price to close above Stevie's green, or now, the red line out there. What happens if it doesn't? Remember, we looked at the uh, Dow. It's got a rising price oscillator above zero. Well, gold would then have a falling price oscillator below zero. It has been falling below zero for about four or five sessions. But we didn't know and we did until we see today's test. And we don't know at 135 in the afternoon. But right now, gold is up into resistance. That's why it is pulled back. It's strong resistance level in here between this 1301 and 1306 level for the all, all intents and purposes out here. But let's also come back and say, hey, until you see a close below support, it's a, it's a coin toss which would be a close below, we'll call it 1292. That's what Stevie sees when he takes a look at uh, gold. If I take a look at how gold is trading in the other currencies out here, uh, let's do that together, obviously. Let's take a look at gold. What, we're, what are we going to see? Um, we're not going to see a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for gold and euros, yen, or pound sterling. It, yeah, it's, it's higher high than Friday. Well, that's a short-term positive out here. But no breakouts, no anything significant there. Uh, so it's going to be about, uh, and here you can see another profile. Now, this is Stevie's synthetic contract priced in dollars. And I apologize for some confusion. One chart, it says 1306. Another chart, it says 1302. Um, they're both valid out here. Look, both of them have been tested at this stage of the game, and both have failed as of 137 in the afternoon out here. Okay, so that takes care of Goldilocks. Uh, what do we want to take a look at next? You've got Lightspeed Crew up a buck. That's always worth looking at. Uh, Brent was in Lightspeed Crew, probably still is out here. If we take a look at Lightspeed Crew, remember our target for uh, Lightspeed Crew is the uh, top of its uh, weekly. And uh, the weekly box out here is 65.40. Now, on this chart um, that we're taking a look at, you have both the daily, the weekly, not both. Now, I got to, I say, how do you say when you got three things up there? It can't be both. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, grammar school. Where, where, where am Here's what we've got on this chart. That's the easiest way. We've got, we've got daily, weekly, and some of the monthly profiles out here. So gold, on its way to the top of that weekly profile, 65.40, if it can take that level out, uh, and you got 65.40, 65.83, because it's 65.83, that happens to be the center of the monthly profile out there. So that should be some pretty stiff resistance, because, by the way, that monthly profile, bearish in structure, you don't see the bottom of the box. Well, if you don't see the bottom of the box, how do you know it's bearish in structure, Steve-O? You, you know, you're very right out there. Let me put the bottom of the box out here just to confirm that. Well, thank you for asking. Actually, it's a, uh, it is a equally distributed box. Equally distributed. 65.40, 65.83 is the next move for gold. Above that, the top of the monthly, 69.82. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. 
The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up one, off 120. S&P is down three, and the NASDAQ is up five points. So when we were taking a look at the markets earlier, we were looking at, uh, well, several charts. But uh, NQ, I want to go back to the NQ here specifically. So what we know, we know prices have been rising to a less relative energy. Those are always patterns to be paying attention to because uh, they, are, they are the ones that can identify, give you early warning signals of a potential top. Of course, you and I know you can't confirm a top until you actually break through support. So we know that's in play. We know price came down, tested support on a daily time frame, being it's uh, Stevie's uh, green line out there. Now, let's go look at the 30-minute chart because we've seen a counter trend rally. And, and then when I say counter trend, I'm just referring to the early morning trend, which is the downside. And now we've seen a rally off of that support level. So it was identified. Now the question is, are we gonna see resistance get taken out? What do you mean, jelly bean? And what I mean by that out here is if we take a look at, well, that's the ES mini. That, that'll confuse you if we go to the ES mini now. Instead, we're gonna stay with the NQ and we're gonna go look at the 30 minute time frame chart. And where this counter trend rally is, taken us to is resistance. Now, resistance established by that little Tommy DeMarc set up nine count. When, on a 30-minute basis, when it formed its high out here at 20 hundred hours back on April the 7th, when was April the 7th? Yesterday, last night, 
when it did that, it uh, did it with a, a, a nice little setup, a nine count setup, did it on count number eight. But if we take a look at the downside move, you see this solid green line out here. That's the high from 2100 hours out there. And that's the key level watch, 7609.75. Prices run into resistance. If this is more than just a counter trend rally, price is going to close above that level out there. Let's go to Kansas City and uh, speak with uh, Robert. Robert, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? Yes, thanks for taking my call. My pleasure. I was calling about GDX, and I, I'm not an intraday trader, trader or day trader. I'm kind of more of a bigger picture, and I wondered if you could look at it on a weekly chart and uh, give me your thoughts. I currently don't have a position in it, but I would just like to get your thoughts. Uh, I heard you talk about gold earlier, and you weren't kind of you're neutral, not too excited, and like to get your thoughts on GDX from a weekly time frame. Sure. So uh, first one, let me clarify. Um, I personally and subscribers, uh, many subscribers may be long a couple of mining equities out there, uh, but I do not necessarily like what I've seen at least as of 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, you're an intermediate term time frame trader, so that's great. What would it take uh, to get you in? Uh, so you're interested in the GDX is, is what it sounds like. So what is it from an intermediate term standpoint that would get you into it? Well, I like to buy bottoms and sell tops. So my Got it. question is, are we are we getting ready to change the trend or continue on up with GDX. If well, I look, look at a weekly time frame and I kind of yeah. look at prior years, it seems to start dropping off in the April, May, and June time frame. GDX does seems to begin to have a change in trend, and I wanted to get your thoughts. Okay. So here's one of the things I want to do first with regard to my thoughts. I'm going to put the weekly chart for GDX up on the screen, and we'll come back to what it's doing today. Uh, or what it is doing, but because you like to buy bottoms, um, I'm going to say there's a couple of patterns that if you just, I'm going to give you the easiest pattern, um, which is the uh, nine count pattern. Uh, and the reason that we're taking a look at this, because you wanted to look at a weekly chart, so I just pulled my weekly chart over, and this bottomed with that pattern. And this is a pattern where you see, you take, you compare, in this case here, this is a nine count to the downside, Robert. And what you're looking at is you're looking at the current bar's close versus the close of the bar four bars earlier. If the current close is below the bar four bars earlier, it would get your count number one. And each successive, and you have to have nine of these in a row in order to create that pattern. Uh, when you get that, uh, you either see a, uh, there, you, you can, see a change in trend occur either on bars eight, nine, or the bar after bar nine. And that is exactly how the GDX bottomed the week of September 14, 2018. So if you like to buy bottoms, that would be one pattern to be focused on and pay attention to out there. So that, that ship has sailed. And now the question is, um, hey, what's it doing? And it's got some resistance levels. That same pattern on a weekly basis, by the way, that identified the bottom has also created this level of resistance because that first count, that first count that uh, gave us bar number one was the week of July 13, 2018. That's a number for you to be looking at. That, by the way, that high, we try to get that for you. That price point is 22.93. So if we just use just this one system, a close above 22.93 would suggest we have a change in trend. Now, there could be another fake up. To the, we saw uh, close to the upside. To the upside, that is correct. So price is trading in the resistance on a weekly basis. Support is also held, which is Stevie's green line right now. We can see, if you're watching this on Tiger TV, the pullbacks that took place in GDX on March 8th, the test of support. The pullback on March 22nd, the test of support. Last week, a test of support, meaning that green line is re also better known as the oscillator on change line out here. But that's not very sexy. I like Stevie's. I can't say Stevie's green line is really sexy out there either. But but it's resistance out here. This or that support, and now we've got resistance. So you're you're really you had kind of mentioned I was kind of neutral. Well, the GDX, the chart itself, right now on a weekly basis, which is your key time frame, it's neutral. There's no doubt about it. Uh, it's absolutely neutral. So there's nothing for you to do here. Um, but in buying bottoms or buying tops, 
Um, that nine count is one. Uh, letters A, uh, the seven count, which is part of the Chapman Wave, would be another tool. Uh, my Roads Momentum Indicator uh, system, which I show subscribers periodically exactly how to do that. That would be an, another one to look at. But the nine count on a weekly chart, if you're just following a GDX or a handful of stocks, you could do this on your own. You know, just if you've got, well, you should be able to do it on your own, whether you do it by hand or you do it, uh, you know, somehow electronically on a, on a chart out here. So that's where you're at on the GDX. Um, buying the bottom, you know, is really already taking place unless there's some type of significant pullback. For GDX on a weekly basis, that level right now would be 2057. If price pull, if it pulled back to 2057, that would be a potential buy area for you. I say potential because you and I don't know if price would break below that. But a pullback there, you would fire away if you were looking to get in. And you had other signals to suggest it was just nothing more than a normal retracement out there. So does that help you? We've got a minute, about half a minute before we go to the hard breakout here. And I just want to make sure I, I answer your question as best as I can. Yes, that's great. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. So you got the nine count. You can see where that bottom took place. And then you understand right now we're between support and resistance. With anemic volume. Um, you, yeah, the weekly chart, no, no, the daily chart, yeah, 12 million shares. It's nothing. Uh, now, what would be nice today is uh, there's a new profile that formed last week. And if price could close about 22.74, that would be short-term bullish out there. So, um, But you're more interested on the intermediate term time frame. So uh, yes, so that's what I've got. All righty? All right. Thank you. You bet. Robert, thanks for calling in. Have a great day. And uh, we'll be right back, folks. Looks like we're going to be doing the two-minute wrap-up when we get back. Dow's off 123. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002 when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let Gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. 
We take it every morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Page of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, Carlos writes in and uh, is today's shooting star formation uh, cause for concern. So right now it's not a shooting star. And uh, heck, we really have to wait for the end of day session uh, for the uh, candle. Um, even if it were to turn into a shooting star, you'd have a potential bearish candlestick, but you also have a bullish candlestick. Remember, gaps are your friends. And inside of SNAP, this is a gap to the upside. Volume behind it, 32 million shares out here. Excuse me, on Friday, uh, price went ahead and closed above another level of resistance. Top of the profile, 142. So that looks uh, pretty good. Now that's on this set of charts out here. Interestingly enough, Snap, when it made its bottom, this is really for Robert out here, uh, formed a TD setup nine count. That was back in December of this year. And then you followed up with a nice bullish engulfing monthly session back there. Boy, if anything, and price was moving lower, doing with less relative energy out there. If anything, sets up a, uh, uh, a bottom. Snap did it there. But Snap also did it. It did the, uh, the perfecta because it also was making that same roads momentum indicator signal the week of December 21st. And that week of December 28th, um, that gave you the bullish confirmation, both the close of a bullish reversal signal, a close above Stevie's uh, red line out there. That was not the nine count. That was the roads momentum indicator. But not to be outdone by the weekly and the monthly, the daily decided to get in on that action out there. So it was the trifecta. A box? No, this was not even a box trifecta. This was a this was a pure trifecta out here as price was moving lower into December 22nd. And on the uh, 24th, looks like or 20, uh, maybe my dates are a little off here at the bottom of my screen. But nonetheless, it formed a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. Price is moving higher, doing less relative energy, but that, that alone, until there's a bearish reversal signal, is no problem for snap, crackle, and pop. So that does it today for the show, folks. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. I'll be back with you on terrific Thirsty Tuesday. Have a great Monday, though. Thanks for being here.